Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, and I'm gonna go over the Magical Musketeers today. Oh, we got a lot of stuff to upload, man. Um, I've been tweaking around with the decks that we pulled today, and um, Musketeers was one of the decks that I was looking to build. Um, unfortunately, I did not pull enough Caspers, and that's kind of like a sad story. He's he's the main card. Uh, he really is. I, I was fortunate enough to play one, so I can at least you know play the deck and showcase it to you as well. And we did not pull enough Starfires. But aside from that, I got everything else that we needed. Um, So let's just go ahead and hop right into this deck. I'll explain it for those of you who are new to the deck because it is fairly new. And uh, we're just going to get into the monster lineup. So we play the what should be three Caspers. Uh, you definitely want to play three of this card. But um, I only have one. So it's very, very sad. We also play three copies of um, his name is pretty cool. It's actually Kid Kid. What is it? Kid Rave? Yeah, Kid. Kid Brave, okay, and it's really, really cool. I like his name a lot. So three copies of Magical Musketeer Kid Brave. So we're going to go ahead and explain to you, Casper. Um, so Musketeers all revolve around columns. Um, all their effects trigger if you activate a spell or trap in their column. They all have hard once per turn effects as well so that you can't abuse that aspect. But during either player's turn, this is the first effect that they all have. They all have this effect, which is during either player's turn, you can activate Magical Musket Spell or Traps from your hand so basically you never have to set your magical muskets if you don't feel that your musketeers will be in danger of being destroyed there's another downside and weakness is you have to control muskets to even activate their effects and their spells and traps in the first place but you can activate their spells and traps from hand if you control any of them that's the first effect the second effect differs and it says when a spell and trap is activated in this card's column which means the same column it's in add one magical musket card from your deck to your hand but not the same card as the activated so this is the searcher of the deck this is what starts the combos if you activate ties on him you're already just going so far in the game I mean, then three Kid Brave. Um, Kid Brave is pretty awesome as well because he says if you activate a magical musket, um, spell or trap. I'm sorry, if you activate a spell or trap in his column, you can discard one musket card, draw two cards. They're all hard ones for turns, but I like playing three of him because he allows you to cycle through the deck as well um, as his attack value, which is pretty nice. It's 1600. It's really high. That's another reason why I feel like I had to play three of him because um. It's mostly a main deck. You rarely get the occasion or chance to go into the extra deck. So firepower does matter because if you double his attack, he's at 3,200, which is really nice. And then we also play um, two copies of Doc. Doc is something that I don't see myself playing three, but um, I, I do like having two of him. Um, mostly for the musket names and also for the ties target. Because say, for example, you open up with your one Doc and you're trying to resolve ties on Casper. You can't do that because... Now you don't have three of uh, the two other targets. So you definitely want to play multiples of the level threes and the fours. Um, Doc, they all have the same effect where you can activate their spells and traps from hand. But his effect, his column effect is if you activate a spell trap in his column, you can add one musket card from your grave to your hand, but not with the same name as the activated card. So he allows you to extend your place and interrupt your opponent in a very, very annoying and a, a aggressive way. Um, because, for example, if you activated the... Um, Let's say you activated Desperado, like going first or something like that, and it's in your grave now. Then you activate another card on your opponent's turn, like um, Cross Domination, and you're trying to interrupt his plays more. You're like, let's add that Desperado back from grave to hand and then play that in a different Muskets com uh, column and trigger that card's effect as well. So he has dual synergy. He also lets you combo off. Because, um, for example, like, like I just said, you do add the Desperado, but then let's say if you have Kid Brave or if you have like starfire you're gonna the card you added from your graveyard you're not gonna activate it in their column and set up a whole nother combo and whole nother play so doc is definitely a great extender and sometimes you run out of your targets and can't use um your actual uh what's his name wild to recycle yet so you kind of have to use him to keep looping every single card that you need from grave to hand and just keep playing it over and over um so those are the level threes like i said you should have three casper in, casper in your list um i just didn't have good luck finding the three then for the level fours, I'm supposed to have three Starfire, um, but I do not have three. I was fortunate enough to pull one of her and one Casper because they're actually the best ones. Her column effect, if you activate a spell trap in her column, you can special summon a level four or lower magical musket from your deck and defense. She is really, really abusive because once you play it in her column, the monster you summon, you're going to play in its column as well. And you can just summon your Casper and then his effect. You just keep going off. It's really cool how the deck combos off. It's amazing. I only have one. That's why you only see one, but I'm definitely going to play her at three. Um, and then next, I'm playing three Calamities. 
I'm going to cut this card to two, but right now, since I'm missing two Caspers and two Starfires, that's four Magical Musket Monsters that I don't have right now. So she's here to fill up the column of names and also Magical Musket cards just so I can have enough monsters because um, you play a very low musket monster count as well. And her column effect basically lets you special summon a Magical Musket Monster from your graveyard. Um, so she's Monster Reborn and she's basically like the uh, tour guide, you can say. Um, so both of them are really, really ridiculous. Um, they pull off some crazy shenanigans because the monster you summon, you'll get to activate its column effect as well. So it's really, really cool. Um, I like her a lot. Um, I don't see myself playing three because opening up with her, you don't have targets yet. But for the time being, because like I said, I don't have the two other Casper and the two other Starfire, she needs to fill up some kind of space in the form of magical musket monsters. So you definitely want to play two Calamity. And Wild is a card I, I'm, I'm kind of on debate about. Whether I play two or one, I don't see it at three, but he basically, um, his column effect is you can target three magical musket cards in your graveyard and uh, shuffle them into the deck, then draw one card. And I'm not sure if musket counts as just the spells and traps or if it's just all the monsters. Because if it counts for all the monsters, I'm definitely going to play two to just keep looping them to use one to put the other back and then this one to put the other back. I'm not sure if it works that way because it says musket card. So it could only be the spells and traps, which is totally fine because they do run out of targets. But he's basically Digusto Emerald for the musket cards, which is really nice. It's something that you definitely want to resolve a lot mid to late game to keep yourself in the game. Um, like I said, it's like a two or a, a one for me, definitely not a three, but his attack value is very, very important because I'm um, under the um, the steady hands. He's basically a 3,400 beater, which is really, really nice. Um, so the 17 comes in handy. And the one of that I like taking out, most much uh, magical musket players don't actually try this card. Um, I really like him a lot. His name is Zaxiel. Um, he's a level, I believe, eight. And you can tribute summon him by tributing one magical musket monster. During either player's turn, the same thing, activate their spells and traps from hand. And once per turn during your opponent's end phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of musket spell and traps that you played on your opponent's turn. He has to be faced up to resolve that. It's like Spellbook of Judgment, basically, um, somewhat pseudo. So basically, if you just keep draining your opponent's resources and playing cards from your hand during the end phase, you can draw two, three, maybe even four cards if you opened up right, which is really, really powerful because it's just going to make sure that you can keep stunning your opponent. This deck is just disruption. Um, I think it has a great trick star matchup in, in addition to that. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so that sums up the monsters. I'm not playing hand traps right now. I'm not saying that I don't want to. I just, man, there are so many other creative cards that I wanted to do for the first variation of this deck. The next variation is going to have Ash, it's going to have Ogre, it's going to have Droll, it's going to have Maxi. I have those cards and you know it. But I just wanted to um, take a crack at this deck without the hand traps first and see how it plays and see if it actually needs hand trap. And one could argue and say that every deck needs hand traps, but I just wanted to see. Um, So yeah, the reason why you don't see hand traps is not because I don't have them. I do have all the hand traps. I just wanted to try the deck without them first and it gave me a lot of room for creativity and spicy text. Starting off with the spells, we play two Magical Musket Domination. It basically says um, you can target a monster on the field. Oh, yeah, I need to remind you, every Magical Musket spell or trap says you have to control a musket first. Um, so if you control a Magical Musket, you resolve this card. Target one face-up monster on the field. Um, it Basically, its attack and defense become zero and its effects are negated. So it's like a breakthrough skill that also, also allows you to push through um, for damage. So it's really, really awesome. Then you play two Steady Hands. Steady Hands and Cross Combination uh, cross domination combo well together. Because you can make your opponent's monsters attack zero and then no effects. And then double the attack of one of your muskets and punch for a lot of damage. Um, but basically, Steady Hands is more of like a damage step trap. Um, damage step hand trap which is really cool. But it lets you target a magical musket monster you control. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, target one magical musket monster you control. Its attack and defense become double. That monster cannot attack directly that turn. Um, which is kind of reasonable. But these are the only spells that were released. Um, I think they're going to get more, but I just played two of each. Because every single magical musket spell or trap is actually a hard once per turn. Um, which is something to keep in mind. So you never want to open up with multiples of them. Then we play three ties of the brethren, the best spells in the the best spell in the deck. Um, it, either if you have the level 4 or the level 3, it's going to be broken because you basically get 3 to now resolve their column effects, but you always want to get Casper no matter what. Um, so this is a very, very powerful spell. And it, of course, you activate it in their column, so you get that effect as well. Keep in mind that if you activate it in Calamity's column or in um, Starfire's column, you can't resolve their effect because you can't special summon for the rest of the turn. So it's more broken if you target any of the level 3s, but keep in mind that it's never dead, basically is what I'm saying. And then my spicy tech... I'm playing three Foolish Burial Goods. 
Now, I forgot to tell you guys, but I cannot find my tune, uh, my tune table of contents. Uh, you guys should know that I have them. I played them in my Dark Lord deck, but I can't find them. Um, and I just, I can't find them. I had a hard time looking for them. So instead of the tune table of contents, I decided to tech in as a proxy slash filler, my Foolish Burial Goods. It's a great spell that lets you activate in their column. And uh, my targets for it, which are pretty spicy, the one that I always like to play is Metal Full Fusion, but I wanted a secondary target as well. And that is Magic uh, Machine Angel Ritual. So this is a really awesome spell in Grave. Um, basically, its Grave effect says if a light monster or monsters, plural, would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you banish this card from the Grave instead. So it's Return of the Dragon Lords. And what that helps out with is when you have your Phoenix deal up, they can't be destroyed by card effects, but they still can be ran over by battle. So it gives you the overlaid protection of the extra layer of protection so that your muskets cannot be dealt with whatsoever. Um, So it helps you from board wipes. It basically says all of your muskets are not going to die that turn. So I just wanted to have it. It's a spicy tech that you can try out because it actually does increase your ceiling. Just having muskets that basically cannot be destroyed, period. It's really, really nice. Um, or you can just stick with the one Metal Force Fusion and it'll work out because um, it just lets you draw. Um, you activate in their column, get their effect, shuffle your deck, and then get a free draw, which is really nice. So it's like you're playing four Upstart Goblins. But I wanted to have another spicy tech just to make the Musket deck list a little different from the standard de deck list that you might be seeing soon. And also to increase my ceiling, like I said, it's a very, very nice tech you should try out. Machine Angel Ritual. Um, it'll definitely throw people off and catch them off guard. Then I also do another spicy tech, which is Transmodify. Um, this, you activate it in the column of the level threes, like Kid Brave, um, the, what's his name? Casper, or even Doc. And uh, you get to resolve their effects. You sack them off, summon another of um, the level four, which would be, you know, Wild Calamity or Starfire. And their effect still gets resolved because monsters don't have to be face up on the field for their effect to resolve. So because you activated Transmodify in their column, their effect will still resolve whether they're face up on the field or not. Similar to if I normal summon Deneb and you activated Bottomless Trap Hole, Deneb's effect will still resolve. That's just an example. So Transmodify is just a spicy tech and it triggers the column effects even more. It's just um the spells you play in this deck, you definitely want to play column spells, spells that you can play right away and be reactive. And then of course the upstart. And then for my other spicy techs, I play all the forbidden. So you can call this forbidden magical muskets. I play two chalice. Two, um, I'm sorry, two Lance, two Chalice, and one Dress. These can be activated easily in their columns. And also, if you draw these going first, you can still play them from your hand and target your own muskets. Obviously, you never want to Chalice them, but you can Lance or Dress them and still get their column effects. So it's really, really cool. In addition to that, it's Damage Step, Reactive, um, basically Hand Traps, or you could just say Regular Traps. In addition to that, it actually allows you to play more on your opponent's turn. This deck is very, very interactive. Um, it just stops your opponent and kind of interrupts his plays a lot. And it's nice to have like a chalice or a dress in addition to that. A dress to protect your stuff. Or if your opponent is trying to activate effect like diagram to pop a monster or whatever, you can just chain dress so that monster cannot be targeted or destroyed. Or even if, for example, because it, it does say that your monster cannot be targeted or destroyed by other card effects. So in the musket mirror match, if they activate ties um, if or before they even activate ties, you can actually just chain dress so that they can't activate ties on that musket monster. Um, or just like something else like chance modify, just anything that targets. Those are just kind of bad examples that I threw out there. But just know that it has this day where it can be a bit more reactive just playing it on your opponent's monsters, which was the main point I was getting at. Um, so it's really, really nice to just have the forbiddance. That definitely sums up the spells. You want to play more spells than you do traps because you want to be able to resolve your musket effects as quick as possible. And then for traps, we play two copies of Last Stand. I definitely wanted to play three Last Stand and three Desperados. Um, but then it ultimately came down to their hard ones returns. You recycle them. So it's just like, just play two of them and you'll get away with it just fine. So we played two Last Stand. I also wanted to take in the um, Dancing Needles for the Spiral matchup. I felt that it might be relevant. So we might see this in the main deck as a one-off. And then I also played two Desperado, which is really, really powerful. Um, just popping a face-up card is <laughs> extremely relevant. And uh, Last Stand is basically like a Dark Ripe. Um, it negates their spells or traps if you control a Magical Musket. And you can play it from hand, which is really nice. So you can negate Diagram. You can negate um, Terraforming, uh, Last Resort. You can negate lights, uh, Trickstar Light Stage. Uh, it's just really, really powerful. You can negate um, the Trickstar Reincarnation. It negates it like a lot, and it's a Counter Trap. And then for the last of the Magical Musket Traps, we play one Phoenix Steel. Basically, um, it says that 
they cannot be destroyed by um, card effects. So you can play it from hand right away just to stop a board wipe. If they activate a board wipe, you can be like chain this from hand, which is really nice. In the column, get its effect as well. And then um, if this card is actually in your possession is uh, destroyed or if it's just sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, add one magical musket card from your deck or graveyard to hand. So they're never, ever going to want to touch this. And what happens then is since they don't want to touch it, your muskets just cannot be destroyed. And if they choose to touch it, you get a free um, plus, basically. Then we play, of course, my um, obligatory standard meta traps are three strike and three evenly matched to make going second more than fair. Um, so that will sum up the main deck. The extra deck, which we're going to get into very soon, is kind of like irrelevant. Um, I find myself not going to the extra deck at all. Unless it's just like, even in playtesting, it's like this deck doesn't need an extra deck. But you play one because you can. Baguska, Utopia Package, Tornado Dragon, Dweller, Care Gorgon to play more on your opponent's turn. Gaga got Cowboy for game, Castell. And then for rank threes, you play Break Sword, um, Levy or the Sea Dragon. The rest, I just don't even know what to add in. It's like I could play multiples of the same name. It's just like stuff that never really comes up, but you play it because you can. Um, so your extra deck is totally up to you. I didn't even want to finish the extra deck because I knew that playing this deck, I wouldn't be going into the extra deck except for maybe these cards. And occasionally, like maybe this. Uh, Break Sword might come up a bit more than I just mentioned, but yeah, still, extra deck doesn't really come up because you always want to leave your magical muskets on the field so that you control them to resolve their spells and effects and their column effects. So it's basically like a main deck. Um, so give your honest opinion and feedback of the deck if you like it. Um, if you think that it needs some work, I already know what I need to work on, but definitely give me some more um positive feedback or just you know constructive criticism, however um you want to do that. Uh, but thank you guys so much. God bless you. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. And I'm out. Y'all enjoy life, man.